Hello and welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be looking at wiring a CRE8900 radio transceiver to a base station microphone. Before we start, there's one thing you need to be aware of. If you're new to wiring up microphones, or maybe you can go back to the old school radios from the late 70s, early 80s, you need to know that there's an additional pin or additional output on most modern radios. Most microphones on modern radios are multifunction. All these functions in the microphone need to be fed with a current, and that, fed, that current is fed out from the microphone socket. In the case of the CRE8900, it's the center pin, this one here, that chap there. You need to be very, very careful. Let's just move the camera out of the way. You need to be very, very careful that you don't get any connections between that pin, pin 6 and any of the others or the ground because what happens is you feed supply voltage 13.8 back into the radio. We call it the pin of death and I can demonstrate that quite easily by putting a current or a load between pin 6 and the ground and there you go. That's a 12 volt LED going across pin 6 in the ground. There's your current. We call it the pin of death because if anything gets cross-connected with that, it puts 12 volt back into the radio and it can do irreparable damage to the radio. And now we come to the pinouts or the, the wiring on the CR8900. You can see there that pin 1 is the audio. There's pin 1. And pin 1 is microphone audio. Your TX is on pin number 3 and your ground is on pin number 5. There's the pin of death, number six. Down here we say it's not connected. Number two is not connected. Number four, this one here, is your up and down control from the microphone. With a bass microphone that doesn't have those up and down channel changing buttons, we can negate number four. Now you'll notice from that that there is no pin for receive. That's because the radio doesn't need it. If it doesn't connect, if it doesn't detect, sorry, a connection between pin 3 and ground, which is your TX, it automatically goes into a receive situation or a receive mode. So we don't need a receive connection. So if you look at this, you only need three pins. You need number one, which is your audio, number three, which is transmit, and number five, which is your ground. Here's the microphone that's going to be wiring up today, Turner Expand 500, very very old microphone, a super good microphone, great quality, um, some of them had a crystal head speech call, some of them had ceramics, but even, even though they're a superb microphone, quite difficult to get hold of now, um, but a very very good microphone, especially if you're thinking about using AM or single sideband. Here we are with the Turner Expander cable with the inner connections or the inner wiring exposed. You can see there you've got a yellow, a black, a red one there, a blue one, the white one which is the audio and the audio is also encapsulated or protected by this bare wire here which is the screen. The only ones we really need to concern ourselves with today is the white one which carries the audio, the screen, the, the blue one which is the transmit. So these are your three connections, audio, screen and transmit. However, having done a few experiments, I found that the only way, and I don't know why this is, I haven't got a clue why it is, this red lead is the relay switching lead for the, for the Expander 500. The only way the microphone will work is to connect the red lead and the screen or the ground together. I don't know why, maybe, maybe somebody out there does know why, but that is the only way it will work. Here we are again with the wiring tidied up a little bit. And as we've already discussed, the red and the braid are connected together. I've actually stripped the insulation for the red right back right back to the outer casing and those two and those two are the red and the braid are now connected together so we can now go ahead and solder the microphone but before we do that I'm just going to get a small piece of heat shrink heat shrink and just slide it over some of this connection here some of this wire here just to stop it from touching the others 
here we are back again there's the heat shrink once again that's the red and the braid connected together okay here's our nice new plug now as previously discussed there's certain pins on this you don't need especially that one the middle pin pin six there's the center one if I turn the plug over you can see it there I hope it's in focus you can see it there okay now there's several methods, some people put heat shrink over cables, some people wrap insulating tape around them, things like that to protect them. I don't bother, I've got a, um, what I consider to be a much better insurance policy. We're not going to use that pin 6, that's the pin of death so we want it out of the way. All we're going to do is simply put a screwdriver on the back of the pin and push, quite hard. There you go, pin 6 is no longer there. There's the pin. I can get hold of it. That's the pin, and it's now come out of the microphone. Danger gone. Now, as we saw in the earlier diagram, you need this pin for the audio. We're not going to use pin two, so we'll get rid of that one. That one's actually managed to bend itself over. That's got rid of that one. Make sure I've got a slot in the right place. We need that pin for the transmit. We don't need this one because this one here is the up and down buttons. So I'm just gonna push that one through, get that one out of the way. So there you go, much, much simpler. Here we are, all soldered together. Um, I didn't waste time on the video telling you how to make solder connections. I'm sure you all know how to do that and if you don't know how to do a shouldered soldered connection you shouldn't really be doing this in the first place but there's the audio connection white lead there there's your blue for your TX um, I don't know how good this camera is but anyway the red and the braid are connected together under the heat shrink shrink heat shrink heat shrink onto this pin here there's our microphone plug reassembled. I'm not going to show you how to put a microphone plug together. I'm sure everybody, if you're at this stage, I'm sure everybody knows how to do that. I'm just going to lock the lock the saddle down here. Very small screws. There we are, all back in one place. Saddle nice and tight to stop the cable pulling out from, from the microphone. First thing to do is make sure we've actually got receive. Yes, we have. So we've got receive. And we need to make sure that the microphone is switching that receive out. Which it is. Just kill the volume on that, just for the time being. Now let's get focused on here, SWR meter, let's make sure we're actually transmitting a carrier. We're in FM at the moment by the way. There you go, transmitting nicely. Just now to check to uh, test our audio signal. Okay, here we are on, on uh, upper side van, going to test the audio. Uh, I've just guessed the, the, the volume and the tone at the moment at at number five about mid-range all, all we need to see at this stage we're actually getting audio into the radio here we go audio one two three test 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 audio so there you have it Turner expander 500 wired up for a CRE 8900 now to finish up with here's your reference um, not the most technical diagram in the world, but we're not interested in that. We're interested in the connections. Here's pin one, that's your audio pin, and from the expander 500, that's the white wire. Pin number three, that's TX switch. From the expander 500, that's the blue cable. And over here, we've got pin number five, which is the ground. And from the expander 500, you connect the ground or the screen wire plus the red together. Here's the ones we don't use. We've pushed out that pin, that pin, that pin. And once again, very important, the live pin here carries 13.8 volts. If it gets connected with any of these, you are in dead trouble. 
once again pin six the pin of death see you next time